show here. What games? I don't know. World Series? What? Did you see those? Or you're one of the um, trolls that say, <laughs> oh, there's no powerhouse teams or there's not enough. No, star actually, power. so I, I stayed up. I'll, I'll be honest. I stayed up. I watched the whole second game. Yeah. Um, I watched that one. That was not a good game. I mean, it was if you're a Diamondbacks fan, but it wasn't a competitive game. You even watched like the last few outs? Yeah, Oof, I watched the whole game. So I know, you. Tommy Pham, four for four, poor guy. Then got my boy Jason at bat, and he got blasted on Twitter. Like, that was bad. It was awesome what Tommy did, but people were like, why Tory take him out? And Tommy's like, because I wanted my boy to get in at bat. That was awesome. Yeah, and then it shut everyone yeah, up. Yeah, that was, was awesome. Ultimate like, so Tommy, off. ex-teammate, Jace, ex-teammate. That was awesome. They both kind of – that was great. That was really cool. So I was happy for that. And then – but game one, I, I stayed up till the top of the ninth. And after the Rangers had bases loaded two outs off Ginkle and didn't score, I'm like, oh, this game's over. Seawald is going to come in and close it out. And I went to and I went to sleep. It was like midnight. That game was on until freaking one in the morning. Had to be up early on Saturday for a funeral. So I went to sleep, and then I woke up to chaos. And normally the Diamondbacks win those chaos games. But uh, Adolis Garcia, Seager with the home run. Adolis Garcia with the home run, obviously. But, I mean, the way I look at it is Diamondbacks literally are one pitch away from being – up 2-0 and they got to look at it and say man we should be up 2-0 right now and going home but i mean give credit to the rangers but the first game was was awesome uh the highlights and then even the beginning of the game where they were up the, the rangers went up the diamondbacks came back and uh i don't know the first game was great the second game was great if you're a diamondbacks fan but a lot to talk about a lot to discuss moves that were made and not made and uh, just you, really well played. Do you feel like there were moves made and not made? I feel like there hasn't been a lot of criticism. It's basically been okay. I mean, even the other day, they're like, you know, you get the classic. And, and this one, I'm on the other side of, well, oh, why'd you take Merrill Kelly out? Uh, it's not really a close game. We'd like him to be good to go for the next one. Not that he couldn't go another inning, but I think he said he felt like he saw maybe a drop of fatigue, right? Stuff down a little bit, 89 pitches. Totally good with that. I'm not like... Ride your horse no matter what. He's got to go the distance. Oh, gladiator. Like, it's not close. It's cool, Kratz. You know, I, I don't think – I mean, sure, you can ask the question, but there's no criticism on that front. It's it's not – that's not the purpose here. The purpose is just not assuming all the time that, you know, a reliever is going to come in and save the day. No, for sure they're not going to come in and save the day all the time. But also, like, I love what Tori said about it afterwards. He said – he said, I'd like for him to be 100% for the final game. Like, he doesn't need to keep going out there. And I would disagree with AJ. I thought the game was a great game until the seventh. You know, it got it got out of hand. And I think that's going to be indicative of what the next two games are, is how do the Rangers figure out if Scherzer doesn't go five, how do they figure out how to keep the game close? I'm not saying they were throwing the rest of the game by the relievers they were putting in, but – the, the you know they could have gone to spores right away there in a two one game to keep it close. They had an off day and they didn't. I'm interested to see how how it goes the next two games. Maybe even yeah, I mean they're gonna spin it back around in game five, Vivaldi. But I think I think it was it was a great game. Montgomery Ye yeah, gave up four runs, but I think he kept it close until until the end there until the seventh, and I think they were trying to stretch him out a little bit too far. So I would, that's where I would say eh, there's a little, you know, what was the decision there for him? Just cause it didn't work out in the moment. I didn't think it was that big a deal. The Rangers never, they didn't bring their bats. Yeah. But who has a better bullpen? I mean, honestly, if you're, who you, who you trust more, the, the Thompson, Ginkle, Seawald, Saul Frank, or, you know, Sabors, Chapman, LeClerc when you're behind. Right, that's kind of the key to me. Is the, the Rangers were behind, and they kept Monty out there. And then once it gets to four to one, I felt like uh, kind of game was not over. worth using him. Yeah, it's not worth using him because the chances of coming back two nights in a row, if the Diamondback and the Diamondbacks were lucky, they didn't have to use their high leverage guys in the second game. But even if it was, you know, have to use to, the chance of coming back from down three after coming back from down two the night before is like almost none. Also, that, here's my thing for for you, both of you guys. We've talked about this, but Kratz. I think if you're a manager in a seven game series, especially one like this, that looks like it's going to go seven, you need to have two to three games where you are not going to use your two or three best relievers. And it's not even just about durability. I'm thinking more about muscle memory. You guys are the best in the world at what you do. You see something enough. 
really doesn't matter who it is unless they are perfect. Every pitch is perfect. You are going to get to him and figuring him out. Even, even if the pitch isn't perfect, right? Even if it's like, hey, Seawald's going to work up here and it's above the zone. But if I see that pitch enough, I'm going to figure out how to get on top of it. That's my problem where you have to pick and choose those spots. So is there a case to be made that Bochi said, you know what? I'm not feeling it today for this game. I'm not going to give them all another look. And then, you know what? I'm going to have to pick in the next three games, probably two of those to use my guys. I just don't want them to see the same pitchers over and over again. I don't, I don't think. No. Yeah. No, I, I agree with you. I think that is a great, it's a great point because yes, guys see them all the time. If, if he felt at 2-1 before Monty gave up those at last two runs that he felt like they could keep it at 2-1, I think they would have gone to him. But you're right. There, there is something to that. And you're kinda, you kind of saw it in game one with Ginkle. Hey, he didn't give up any runs. Absolutely. But he gave up a hit. He gave up a walk. He had some deep counts. Only struck for Ginkle, he only struck out one. You know, normally with against the Phillies, he was just striking out everybody. It was like it was like Bugs Bunny out there, like one, two, three breaks, you're out. It was just <laughs> it was just quick work of everybody. So you have to keep you have to be a little prude with your with your usage. Like you can't just keep doing the same thing over and over again. There there's only, you know, there's only one Mariano Rivera. There's, that's why he was a unanimous choice for the Hall of Fame, like that dominant. You, you're not going to each of these guys in a seven-game series and constantly getting the same thing out of all of them. Just like I don't think you're going to hit a dinger off of Paul Seawald every night he comes out either unless unless they know something or they see something. So, yeah, I, I think it, it could have been a case where he was kind of trying to hold them back, but you look back and they didn't score enough runs, so it wouldn't have mattered anyway. So I remember the Diamondbacks said, and actually you sent me this clip, Kratz, that they had to make pretty drastic pitching changes in terms of game plan strategy in the last series against the Phillies after they were down 2-0. So now it's 1-1, series shifting to Arizona, you get an off day, okay? And, and part of it was, and you can explain this better than I can, they were like, there are spots that we can execute where we can beat the Phillies, and we saw it in the last round by some success from say Strider and some of the relievers for the Braves, including say up and into some of the pitchers, which I mean, it's not rocket science, but they weren't executing there. Okay. So do you think that there's any key adjustments from these first two games for either side where you're looking at something very glaring going that needs to be fixed? You know, I mean, Texas walked a ton. They spit at everything in the, in the first game. And then Arizona in game two, Lavello goes, we are throwing them strikes because if we don't, they're going to get on base and we're screwed. So do, what do you think now happens? Adjustment wise, I think they need to go out and they need to attack fought. They need to attack fought in the fought in the way that they attacked him in his first game that they faced him in his big league debut. I think, I think Merrill Kelly, if you're the Rangers, you got to look at that outing and be like, okay, he was executing that pitch down and away. I think there's some pitchers that you have to say if he can execute this pitch three times in a row. Tip your cap. But if you stay in your zones, eventually he'll he'll come out of his execution. And I think Merrill Kelly got better and better. He got a little bit of help off the plate. Quinn Wilcott was quite large on that outer half sometimes. And it created a lane for Merrill Kelly to stay in. And then once he created that lane, a perfect example is, is uh, Evan Carter. He ran, a, he ran like a cutter that he froze him on bottom of the zone, just like it never, it never sank out of the zone. It never – it just stayed on plane, and he froze him. Next time up, he breaks that – he broke the breaking ball right off the same plane, and it was in the dirt. So he did a good job of executing. For the Rangers, they have to make sure that Fott gets in the zone and he, they stay in the zone because, unfortunately for them – Alfonso Marquez is behind the dish tonight. He's going to have a larger zone. He's not going to be very consistent with the strike zone. Here's my thing for tonight. Fought, fought pitch against him, gave up four homers in four innings. Seven runs. That's a, that's a lot. That was, no Seager and Carter yeah. in that lineup. So, but that was a while ago. It does, it? Yeah, but still, I mean, Fott's been an 
animal for him this this postseason, right? Like he's been twice, he's been put in a spot, and they're like, oh, let's see what the guy has. And he's gone out twice and shoved, right, at Milwaukee and then against Philly twice. So this guy's been really good for him, and he's someone they're counting on now. He's kind of gone from an unknown to someone that the, the Diamondbacks are like, man, we can count on this dude. I mean, he's 98, heavy sink, right, a little cutter, a little breaking ball, a little change up. Sweeper. So, sweeper, Kurt, whatever. One's cur- I mean, curveball, sweeper, slider, slurve, whatever. It's all a breaking ball. The sweeper's ball. been the pitch for him, though. Yeah, I know. But but also 98 with the goes, phew, is also a great pitch for him. That's a good one. But the thing he's been, he's been in the strike zone. He's been able to control the strike zone up and down and in and out, right? And if he can do that again, I, I mean, I don't care how good the Rangers are. But if they only get four hits in one run, Scherzer can go out and do the best he can. I don't think that's going to be good enough unless he throws a shutout, which is a lot to ask against the way the Diamondbacks get on base. Max – Max used to be able to hold runners really well because he could hold the ball and hold the ball and hold the ball. Now with the pitch clock, he can't do that anymore. So he's going to have to slide seven. We've seen the, the games when Arizona gets on, even game two, they were just like, all right, just go. It was like, all right, on your mark, it's set, go. And Heim was making good throws. He had no chance. <laughs> so can the, the key for me is can they get to fought and can Arizona execute their offense, which their offense is everyone says get on base, but they also, when they hit the home run, that's if they hit a home run or two, they'll win. It's it's pretty simple for me. Can Scherzer be good enough and can Fott not do what he did his first start against the Rangers? And you're right. I mean, it happens pretty frequently now in the postseason. People will point out for years the team that out homers the other team is going to be in better shape. I think it's 22-4 and four right now if you out homer no, the other team. That usually but, means you're scoring more runs. Yes, but <laughs> if you steal more bases than the other team, 17-6 and six this postseason. So if you do both, too. and guess what? If you do both, you're winning. You're probably winning. <laughs> True. That's what the Diamondbacks have done, though, right? They've when the games they've won, they've hit home runs and they've stole base. I mean, we saw in six and seven in Philly. I mean, they were doo, doo, JT Romuto is the best throwing catcher in baseball. They were just like wee wee wee, like he couldn't do anything to slow them down. They're changing the way that that we're going to evaluate teams and players and all of that too, because they're running this much. Teams are going to be looking for that in the offseason. Just saying. Very controversial, the wave in the World Series. Yay, nay, or okay if it's a blowout. Watch stadium.com slash foul territory. There's context to this. We'll tell you about it later. We'll ask Russ about it, actually, when we bring him in next.